Hi, welcome to Danny After Dark. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a notification for a new episode. Tonight, I'll be featuring the case of Betty Lou Beats. So let's go ahead and find out more. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Betty Lou Beats was born on March 12, 1937. Not a lot was found in my research leading up until 1983. On August 6, 1983, Betty Lou reported her husband, retired Dallas fireman, Jimmy Don Beats, missing. He was missing from their home in Cedar Creek Lake in Henderson County, Texas. August 12, 1983, Jimmy Don's boat was found drifting near the Redwood Beach Marina on Cedar Creek Lake. In the boat, authorities found Jimmy Don's fishing license, his nitroglycerin tablets, and a life jacket. Police searched for Jimmy John for three weeks, but they could not locate the missing man. Now, almost two whole years went by and still no sign of Jimmy Don. But now police received information that they considered credible from a confidential informant. This indicated that not only was Jimmy John dead, but his death may have resulted from foul play. Betty Lou's son, Robert Branson, ended up confessing to police that his mother informed him that on the night Jimmy Don went missing, she intended to kill him. In fact, she told her son to leave the house while she did so. Well, Robert did just that. And he said when he returned back to the house that night, after about two hours, he came home to find Jimmy Don dead from two gunshot wounds. So then he helped his mother, Betty Lou, hide the body. They hid it in an ornamental wishing well that was on the property, the front yard of the house. Robert also said that the day after the murder, Betty Lou placed some of Jimmy Don's heart medication in his boat and they removed the propeller. Together, they then abandoned the boat in Cedar Creek Lake to make it look as though he was missing. Well, police got a search warrant and they did in fact find Jimmy Don's body at the house where Robert said it would be. Well, that must be where the case ends, right? <laughs> Not even close. Now for a twist. Police didn't just find Jimmy Don's body. They also found the body of Doyle Wayne Barker this was another former husband of Betty Lou's. His remains were found buried under a storage shed in the backyard. While two bullets were found in Jimmy Don's body, three bullets were found in Doyle's body. All five bullets were identified as 38 caliber projectiles. This was the same caliber as a pistol that was seized from Betty Lou's home during an unrelated incident. Now, in regards to Doyle, Betty Lou's daughter, Shirley Stinger, told police that she had assisted her mother in burying his body back in October of 1981. This resulted after Betty Lou had shot and killed Doyle. July 11th, 1985, Betty Lou was indicted for the capital offense murder of Jimmy Don. How did she plead? Not guilty. The trial started for Betty Lou and the prosecution aimed at trying to convince the jury that money was the motive for Betty Lou's murder. They intended to prove this by bringing in several witnesses. These witnesses testified at Betty Lou's trial that she attempted to collect $100,000 in life insurance benefits and $1,200 a month in a pension benefit after Jimmy Don's death. The defense tried to convince the jury that the reason Betty Lou had committed the crime was she was a battered wife. This was at a time in history before the term battered women's syndrome was used. October 11th, 1985, the jury found Betty Lou 
guilty of the capital offense. October 14th, 1985, Betty Lou stood for her sentencing hearing in the court sentenced Betty Lou to death. For many years, there were many different appeals filed by Betty Lou against the state court. But not just there, she tried to appeal also to the federal district court, the Supreme Court, and the United States Court of Appeals. In her last denial, she was denied by the Supreme Court on January 18th, 2000. February 24th, 2000, then Texas Governor George W. Bush declined a grant to stay. Bush ended up releasing a statement explaining his decision not to step into this case. And that read, quote, after careful review of the evidence of the case, I concur with the jury that Betty Lou Beats is guilty of murder. I'm confident that the courts, both state and federal, have thoroughly reviewed all the issues raised by the defendant, end quote. Later that same day, Betty Lou Beats was executed by lethal injection. She was pronounced dead at 6, 18 p.m. Betty Lou left behind five children, nine grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. One of the many quotes that Betty Lou has said before her execution, one stood out which said, quote, I really believe that to kill me is to tell every battered woman and child, every abused woman and child, that there is not a chance and that there is no end but death and that we can't fight back. It doesn't have to be this way and God help us all if it happens this way, end quote. That is the case of Betty Lou Beats. Thank you for sticking around for another episode of Danny After Dark. Do you have any questions or comments on the case? Leave it down below. Let's be interactive. Do you have a suggestion for a case that you'd like me to cover? Well, leave it down below and you may see it featured in an upcoming episode. Until next time, remember, we don't live in darkness. Darkness lives in us.